Higher. So I've spent the last three or four weeks working on a new location and this one's a little bit different because it's raining. That uh, sounds simple enough, but on the outside I've not done anything like this up to now and to be honest I wasn't entirely sure how to do it when I started. So for this devlog I'm going to do a super quick breakdown of all of the various pieces. The ground's made up of three different parts. There's the normal modular pieces that I use for layout. There's a single plane that the actual player character walks on, and then just floating above that is a fluid ninja simulation that creates a kind of mud effect. Now each of these is using a variant of the same material that I created in Substance Designer. For this, I took the ground material from the first dungeon, added a few stones and up the specular. I had a bunch of ideas on how to do the puddles, all of which were wrong because Substance has a water level node and that, you know, does what it says on the tin. Now the base material, the one that's the most visible in the game, is used on the modular ram of pieces and they're just the blocking meshes that form the shape of the level. In Engine, the material's a simple triplanner, which is super lazy and it does distort, but I didn't want to create a new set of UVs for each of the pieces, and the distortion is not super bad when the camera's facing down. I mean, you can notice it if you look for it, but, you know, whatever. The base material, the collision plane that the player walks on, is basically the same thing with a lower water level, and I've just removed the stones. The middle material has no stones and the water level is at max and that's what's used on the Fluid Ninja plane. The Fluid Ninja setup for this is identical to the Stage 9 example in the World Space level. I've just tweaked the numbers to make something a little bit more gloopy. The simulation has just slowed down. The basics of the rain I kind of understood. It's easy to create a ring and animate it in a material, but I picked up a couple of tricks from Ben Cloward's raindrops material uh, video, which I'd not seen before, and that's using a grayscale to animate time and the blend angle corrected normals node. Now, honestly, I've been combining normals the wrong way for years. Uh, I didn't even know that existed. So Ben's channel is ace and uh, well worth a look. So I was able to put everything into a material function that generates the ripples in the normals in the correct UV space and then lets me scale the roughness and specular of the rest of the material. I created a few new master materials using this function and everything in the level now uses that. Most of the things in the level have raindrops appear over their entire surface, but that, that base material, that ground material, the thing on the modular pieces, I want it to be more localised. So I've used the specular from the substance material as a straight mask on the normals, and this means that the, the, the raindrops basically only appear in the puddles on the material, which I think looks kind of cool. Now ideally, I would have liked to have had cloud reflections in the puddles as well, and I tried a couple of ways of doing it, but they, they, they all look a bit janky, so... What I've ended up with instead is a light function material in the main light. Now this is super simple, again it's just a simplex noise mapped over world space and I sort of ramp it up and down. Um, this modulates the light in a way that leaves sort of pools of light and dark that scroll over the map and the player can walk through um, and I think it looks kind of cool. It's, it's quite subtle in this location but I might reuse it in, an, in another map location later. Now the raindrops are from a particle emitter that literally follows the camera. The particles are in world space and they fall diagonally to match the tilt of everything else that's in the world. The lightning's from a single directional light that periodically moves to a random location, faces in a random direction and flashes. When I flash it, I take its forward vector, walk along it one or two kilometers, wait a bit and then spawn in the, the actual sort of lightning sound effect. And that just gives the impression that the lightning bolts are happening at various distances away from the player. When the lightning flashes, I take the post-process volume and I desaturate the entire scene completely and then slowly lerp it back in. And yes, yes, I know, I can hear some of you mashing your keyboards into the comments already. I'll try and remember and put an option in to turn this off. Talking of blends, the rain needs to blend in and out as the player enters and leaves the area. Now, to do this, I've put a bunch of scalars into a material parameter collection, and the rain function uses this to calculate the strength of the normals. I already have a system in place that blends between lighting and post-process setup, so I expose the internal weightings from this system to the rest of the game, and there's an actor in the level that literally pulls this and then updates the material parameters for the rain and clouds, and it just adjusts the spawn rate of the uh, particle effects for the rain. And that basically just lets me sort of blend the entire thing in and out as the player's walking through the post-process volume. 
be honest, there's not much else to this level. The post-process volume is fairly vicious. I've gone heavy with a vignette and there's a lot more grain than usual. Uh, grading wise, the overall temp is skewed to blue and the entire color range is desaturated. The highs and the mids are offset to yellow and green. And I play up to this by pushing the green really hard in some of the diffuse, particularly on the trees, but also in the lighting around the mushrooms. Um, and the end result is this sort of weird sepia that comes in and out with the lightning, um, which is actually quite close to how I envisioned it when I started, which is super rare for me. So I'm quite pleased with this. I've ended up with a location that's really distinct from the rest of the game, and it's something that I can probably reuse. I've literally got dynamic rain in clouds now, so um, I might drop this into one of the other locations just so it sort of rains periodically. But yeah, quite a cool effect. So as ever, thanks for watching. If you liked any of this, you know, please add me here to your wish list and uh, you can always follow my dev blog for kind of weekly updates on what I'm up to. Cheers.